consider yourself an artist. It's funny, I don't, you know, when it comes to fashion, I mean, there's a certain art about it, but sure. it's also, it has to be a business if you plan to actually continue to do it. If it wants, if you need to, uh, if you want it to, to prosper and to mm -hmm. continue, uh, yeah, exactly. To sustain it over a period of time, you do mm -hmm. have to have some business acumen. Uh, I, on the, I've never really considered myself an artist. I'm just getting used to using the term writer to describe me because this is my right. first, this is my <clears throat> first novel. So I, I consider myself to be a, a public relations, public affairs consultant first and foremost. And right. I did some writing on the side that uh, has worked, seems to have worked out uh, reasonably well, much to my uh, to shock and, <laughs> and joy. But. Uh, so I'm, I'm getting used to throwing that term writer around and attaching it to, to me, but it's not, uh, intellectually I can accept it, but intuitively and, and instinctively it's not a word that springs to my mind right. when I think about who I am. But, uh, but an artist, I mean, I look at some of, the, uh, some of the clothes you've designed and do you get onto the page with, are you writing, drawing stuff the way I see designers do on when I watch <laughs> FT in the afternoon? Somewhat. I mean... What we do is not sort of shape changing, you know, gowns and things right, like that that just have couture. to be, yeah, that have to be sketched. But once you have created a certain amount of different styles, right. it's, you know, it's, it's not like you're reinventing from, from square one every time. So right. it's, it's a building process and uh, sometimes, believe it or not, I'll just take a garment and tear it apart and tape it up and... It's easier to communicate that way sometimes than right. it is by Starting drawing from it. Scratch, you, know, you have something, yeah. something in 3D. It's actually easier. That's how I work. Right. And then I'm willing to take an old piece and rip it apart and draw a marker all over it and right. put tape on it and this and that. Change its shape, change its contour, yeah. and then find uh, like that, and then find the the right fabric and yeah. turn it into your own. Yeah. Because your the designs I saw on the website, which were pretty cool. I'm not sure I could. Thanks. I'd get in them, but uh, <laughs> uh, you never know. I might, I suppose, because but sure. they're quite sleek and they're not outrageous. Like it's not uh, you know, John Paul Gaultier. Or <laughs> no, like no, that. no. It's uh, but no it cones on the breasts. Or <laughs> yeah, <anything. exactly. laughs> well, I was yeah worried about what to what to wear today. I figured just a blue shirt would would work okay. But solid. Uh, yeah, I see. We've got the same color almost. That's uh, it's obviously that's the, <laughs> it's the end, the end <laughs> yeah. blue for this year. Yeah. Uh, so, has your creative process changed over uh, over time as you get yeah, more I mean, experience? I, uh, yeah, I mean that's a good question. You know, I find myself maybe a little bit more thinking a little bit more about um, the consumer. You know, the during that during that process. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> what I would like to do is this, but would anybody wear it? You know, you right. really have to temper your own creativity with whether it's marketable or right. whether you think it's. Market. I mean, partially you're making a statement with some of what you do, um, but at the end of the day, you want to also make things that are going to get out onto bodies and be walking yeah. around. Well, that's true. Well, on the writing side, it's not a, a dissimilar process in a way. If you hope for your book to be popular <clears throat> and to be picked up and to be enjoyed by more than just uh, your immediate family. <laughs> so I really wrote just for personal satisfaction and the challenge of seeing whether I could string a hundred thousand words together in a way that somehow approached coherence and may make people smile once in a while and even uh, yeah. even laugh would be thrilling if, uh, if that happened. But So uh, it was a really, really a challenge. And so how do you, I mean, <clears throat> what, what's the process involved in getting it out to the readers? And I mean, in terms of getting it published and... Well, in uh, this process, uh, this is the first time I'd done it, and I went through what I think a lot of writers go through. Uh, I wrote the manuscript, I approached agents in the hope of landing an agent who could then submit it to a mainstream publisher. I could not get an agent. Uh, really? It's tougher to find an agent than it is to find a publisher, I think, uh, in, this, uh, really? in this country. Yeah, I could not find an agent. I sent it to a bunch of small publishing houses, no interest there, so... I published it myself, I self-published it, and uh, I also podcast the novel one chapter at a time. So the entire novel is available free on iTunes uh, and many other podcast uh, directories, and you can really? listen to the whole novel. So I, I built my audience in that way, and then uh, after it came out, it did reasonably well as a self-published novel, and uh, I managed to 
uh, just on a lark, I submitted it to the the Stephen Leacock Medal for Humor competition. Just uh, which you a, just happened to win. <laughs> well, w which I ended up winning, which was a complete shock. Uh, I really it, just looking to find ten more readers for the novel. You have to send ten novels to the judging committee, so I did that and just in a nothing ventured, nothing gained kind of way. And miraculously, it unfolded that uh, I ended up uh, winning it, which has really changed my, my life as a writer. I never would have dreamed that, that were even possible.